The movie opens with a couple at a bar talking about the three people sitting across them. These three people, a Korean man, an American man, and a Korean woman, seem to be having a light-hearted conversation over a few drinks. The couple speculates that the woman and the American are a couple, and the other guy is the girl's sibling. Or maybe the Koreans are the couple, and the American is their friend. For us to know more about the story of these three, the movie takes us back 24 years ago in South Korea. Na Young and Hee Sung are childhood friends. They always walk home together after their classes. On this particular day, Na Young is crying because Hee Sung's score is higher than hers. Hee Sung comforts her in the two part ways. At the Young household, the rooms are filled with moving boxes. The whole family is going to relocate to Toronto. Na Young and her sister Si Young are deciding to change their names to English. Na Young's mother asks her who she likes at school. Remembering her bond with Hee Sung, she confidently tells her his name. She even goes on to say that she will marry him one day. Her mother encourages her to go on a date with him which makes Na Young incredibly happy. Na Young and Hee Sung, along with their mothers, go on a date the next day. While the two play together in the light rain, their mothers sit by the bench, watching them. They both share that their child speaks greatly of the other, and they adore each other. Na Young's mother confesses that their family is immigrating soon, and she is trying to make great memories for Na Young. This surprises Hee Sung's mother, since the Young household is thriving as they are, so she does not see the reason for them to emigrate. However, Na Young's mother simply states that when you leave something behind, you find something new. Their family leaves the park together that afternoon. Na Young falls asleep on Hee Sung's chest. The next day at school, Na Young tells her classmates that she is emigrating. When Hee Sung hears this, his heart is shattered. They walk home together as usual, but neither of them utter a single word. When they reach their crossroads, Hee Sung finally says goodbye for the last time, as the two go on their separate ways. Na Young and her sister practice English happily on the plane. She changes her name to Nora, while her sister C changes her name to Michelle. Nora is still oblivious to the gravity of their immigration. She still does not realize that she might never be able to see Hee Sung again. Twelve years later, Nora is now a young woman living in New York City as a playwright. On the other hand, Hee Sung has just finished his military service back in South Korea. In her apartment, Nora is on a call with her mother, looking for her classmates back in Korea. She remembers Hee Sung, and having a massive crush on him back then. She looks for him on social media and sees his comment on one of her father's movies. He is looking for her, wanting to reconnect. She tells this to her mother and says that she will call her back. She views Hee Sung's profile and is delighted to see how much he has changed. She immediately sends him a friend request and a message introducing herself. Back in South Korea, Hee Sung wakes up with a hangover from drinking with his friends the night before. He checks his phone for new messages and finally reads Nora's message. He views her profile and is also surprised and delighted to see how much she has changed. His mother calls him for breakfast, and he gets up before even returning a message to Nora. His mother notices his good mood and wonders where it is coming from. It is afternoon in New York City. Nora is working on her laptop at a coffee shop when she receives a message from Hee Sung. She hurriedly comes home and freshens up, excited to reconnect with her dearest childhood friend. Hee Sung initiates a video call and they start reconnecting. They are both shy and delighted when they see each other once again after a long time. They have no idea what to say, and remain speechless from their amusement of each other, but they surely recognize each other. Nora tells him that she was just looking for her old classmates for nostalgia when she came across his post. Hee Sung tells her that he has been seriously looking for her, and wants to reconnect. He asks her if he can still call her Na Young, and Nora agrees. Although no one, not even her mother, calls her that anymore. Hee Sung remembers that she cried a lot when they were younger. Nora laughs at this and remembers how competitive she was back then. She is grateful that Hee Sung stayed with her whenever she cried. She shares that she also cried a lot when they immigrated, but when she realized that no one cared, she stops crying. Nowadays, Hee Sung is still studying to become an engineer. He has to go, as he has a class to attend. At the same time, Nora is preparing for dinner. Before he goes, Hee Sung tells Nora that he missed her. He is not sure how that makes sense, but that is just how he feels. Nora responds that she missed him too, even though she has no idea how that happened. With that, they end their calls and plan to talk again. After their call ends, Nora stops for a moment to process her emotions. The excitement and longing she did not know she had for her dearest childhood friend suddenly blossoms in her heart. This sets her in a relaxed and elevated mood. She sends him an email right before going to bed. Since she has not been using Hangujeo for a while, she has to write it on paper first, so she can have a guide in typing her email. The next morning, both Nora and Hee Sung make time to call each other. Nora wakes up early, even though she never wakes up before 10 usually, just so she can talk to Hee Sung. As the days pass by, they incorporate talking to each other throughout their days, and they get to know more about each other. Hee Sung pokes fun at her Korean for being rusty, since she is not practicing her language as much anymore. Hee Sung still sees her as the girl he adored. She is eager to do everything, and wants to achieve everything in her power. Nora shares that she will be in Montauk for a month for her artist residency. She asks him if he has any plans to go to New York, but Hee Sung is already bound for China to study Mandarin. 
On the other hand, Nora has no interest in going back to South Korea, since she has already built her life in New York. Although they long to be each other's company, neither of them is too eager to leave their own lives behind. One night in New York, Nora calls Hee Sung to ask when will it be possible for him to visit New York. He says that it will be at least a year and a half. He tries explaining that he has a language program exchange, but Nora cuts him off, saying that he does not need to explain. She tells him that it will take her at least a year before she can visit South Korea again. With a heavy heart, she tells him that they should stop talking for a while. Hee Sung has no idea where her sudden decision is coming from. Nora explains that she has sacrificed so much in her life to be in New York, and she wants to achieve something there. Reconnecting with Hee Sung only makes her hesitate and long to go back to Korea. Hee Sung cannot simply agree with it, after looking for her for the last 12 years. Nora assures him that it will just be for a while, she just has to sort things out for herself. Hee Sung stops for a moment. He is left stunned by the pain of her decision. In the end, he agrees with her, even if it breaks his heart. Nora travels to Montauk the next day to pursue her career. She stares blankly at the scenery as her bus starts moving, contemplating the decision she made the night before. She finds the artist retreat house empty when she arrives. She inspects the place to find that it is minimalistic and well-maintained. Up on the second floor, she finds rooms for the artists, and settles in one. Meanwhile, Hee Sung hangs out with his friends. They are all surprised when he shows up late, and what surprises them even more, is when he drinks alcohol quicker than he has before. They ask him when is he leaving for China, and he simply tells them that it is going to be that week. But that does not matter for him at the moment, he just wants them to drink the night away with him. His friends have no idea that Hee Sung is just drowning down the pain he is feeling. Soon, artists start arriving at the retreat house. Nora meets a guy named Arthur, who she starts getting to know for the whole retreat. On the other hand, Hee Sung finally arrives in China, where he meets a beautiful woman that he soon bonds with. Nora tells Arthur about the Korean concept of Inyon, which is inspired by reincarnation. It has the same idea as fate, but it solely focuses on people's relationships. It is said that when you brush past a stranger, then it means that you have met each other in your past lives. People who fall in love and end up together are a result of thousands of Inyon, or meetings of their past lives. Arthur asks her whether she believes that they have met in their past lives, which is why they met again today. Nora chuckles at the idea, since she does not believe it. She tells him that it is only something that Koreans say to entice women. The two of them develop romantic feelings for each other in the span of the retreat. Arthur presses his lips to Nora's and they passionately kiss. Twelve years pass by, and Nora and Arthur are now married to each other. Nora is now a remarkable playwright. She is given the role of a judge for aspiring playwrights, alongside other remarkable playwrights in the city. After the event, Nora picks up some refreshments and heads to Arthur's book signing event. Just like Nora, Arthur has made a name for himself, and gained a lot of supporters throughout his career as a book author. Nora and Arthur go out on a lunch date. She reminds him that her childhood friend, Hee Sung, is coming to the city for a vacation. Back in Korea, Hee Sung is eating out with his friends. They are also aware that he is going to New York City for a vacation. They tease him that he is only going to see his first love, Na Young, now that he and his girlfriend are on a break. But Hee Sung denies this, saying that Na Young already married seven years ago. They drop the topic and instead say that his vacation is unfortunate because, according to the weather forecast, it will be raining there for the whole duration of his stay. True to the forecast, Hee Sung arrives in New York in a thunderstorm. He enters the hotel lobby, soaking in rainwater. Hee Sung is at the park waiting for Nora. He is dressed neatly, in blue long sleeves. He checks his reflection in the shallow pond, making sure that he is looking his best. Nora calls him from behind, and he instantly turns to look at her. Seeing each other in person after 24 years is both confusing and exciting, causing both of them to stop for a moment, to take their realizations in. Hee Sung remembers them playing at a park when they were just kids. It was one of their best memories together. Nora walks toward him with a genuine smile on her face and goes for a hug. With his unresolved feelings, he awkwardly stands there for a moment, before returning her hug. Both of them are overwhelmed by excitement and longing. There are so many things they would like to say to each other, but neither of them has any idea where to begin. Nora goes for a hug again, and this time, Hee Sung receives her with all his heart. They ride a train to Brooklyn, as they plan that Nora will show him around the city. They walk along the port as they catch up with each other's lives. Nora shares that she went to Korea with Arthur before they got married. She sent an email to Hee Sung, because she wanted to meet him, but he never responded. Hee Sung knows that at that time, he didn't know how to feel about the news, especially with the way he and Nora parted ways. He knew that he couldn't meet with her, having his feelings unresolved. Still, he does not say any of this to her, and chooses to simply apologize. Nora further tells him that she wanted to meet his girlfriend back then, and asks how they are nowadays. Hee Sung says that they are having a break for a while to sort things out for themselves. Recently, they have been talking about getting married, but Hee Sung is still unsure about his true feelings. Nora tells him that if he truly loves her, he should marry her. However, that is not an easy thing for him to do, considering his circumstance. Being an only child, he has to earn more money and be better off in life, to support the life he and his future wife will be making, as well as his family. 
He Sung believes that he is just an average guy, therefore it is difficult for him to settle down and start his own family. The afternoon passes by, and the two are resting in front of the carousel. Nora gets curious why He Sung looked for her 12 years ago. At first, He Sung is hesitant, but he tells her that he wanted to see her one last time. She left him so suddenly, and it left him lonely and longing for his dearest friend. Nora cannot understand why he would do that, and neither can He Sung. He just knows that he could not stop thinking about her all those years ago. This leaves Nora speechless. They were only young children back then. Arthur is playing video games at home when Nora arrives that night. He asks her how her meeting with Hee Sung was, and she confirms that Hee Sung did come to see her. As they prepare to go to bed, Nora shares that it has been a weird experience for her, seeing her childhood friend grow up to be a typical Korean man. He has a regular job, resides with his parents, and upholds traditional Korean beliefs. Arthur is getting a bit uncomfortable with how his wife is describing this childhood friend of hers. He asks her whether she is attracted to him. Nora says that he is very masculine. It is just so unusual for her, since Hee Sung has been a child in her head for a long time. Then he was just an image on her laptop screen. But now she's met him in person. However, she does not believe that what she is feeling is attraction. It is just that she missed him a lot. Seeing how Nora's face lights up when she talks about Hee Sung leaves a painful lash in Arthur's heart. He wants to say something to her to ease his pain, but he cannot find the right words to say. Nora asks him whether he is mad, but Arthur simply tells her that he has no right to stop her with what she wants to do. And either way, he knows that Nora is not just going to abandon him out of nowhere. Arthur cannot help but think that he has gotten in the way of fate. Nora and Hee Sung are childhood sweethearts that meet again after 20 years. They could realize that they are meant for each other, but Nora is already married to him. Nora just laughs him off and assures him that it is nothing of the sort. Sometimes he wonders if this is the life that she had pictured for herself when she was younger. Nora surely misses the Korean girl she had been. But she knows this is the life she wants. She chooses to be with him, and she is not going to give that up. This does not change the fact that deep down, Arthur feels insecure that there is a Korean world inside her that he can never be in. This has been his driving force to learn her language, so he can get even closer to her. The next morning, Nora meets up again with Hee Sung at the port. Since she has not eaten yet, he offers her something for breakfast. He remembers that when they were children, Nora wanted to win a Nobel Prize, and when they reconnected 12 years ago, she wanted to win a Pulitzer. He cannot help but wonder what she has in mind now. She tells him that she has not thought about it for a while, but she wants to win a Tony. He sung chuckles at her, seeing that she is still the passion-driven girl that he knows. They board the cruise ship and admire the scenic view of New York. They pass by the gleaming Statue of Liberty, and Nora offers Hee Sung to take his photo. Afterward, the two of them take a selfie together. They spend the afternoon enjoying the trip. At some point, Nora shows him her and Arthur's wedding photo, which he compliments, but he cannot help but feel a little pain. Nora invites him over to her house that evening. She assures him that Arthur knows who he is, and that he is coming over to their house. As a matter of fact, her husband wants to meet him. They enter the house, and Arthur greets them at the entrance. He sung is speechless for a moment, but he tries his best to greet Arthur, despite their language barrier. The atmosphere between them is a bit heavy, considering their relationship with one another, but Arthur is a good host. He invites them to dinner, and together they walk to the nearest restaurant. He starts initiating conversation, and asks He Sung what they did that day. He Sung tries his best to communicate, and Nora helps him as well. They tell him about the Statue of Liberty, and Arthur reacts in awe, as he has never been there before. He Sung suggests that she should take her husband there as well. After dinner, they head to the nearest bar so they can learn more about each other over a few drinks. This takes us back to the present, at the beginning of the movie. He Sung tells them about his time in the military service. Because of his limited English, Nora translates the conversation back and forth between him and Arthur. Despite the job being hard, He Sung tells them that it usually takes a toll on his physical health, but he knows that he is mentally strong. He Sung casually mentions that it was a good thing that Nora's family decided to immigrate back then. Korea is too small for her passionate and ambitious nature. He is happy to see her once more, and is glad that she introduced him to her husband. Arthur is a kind and loving man, and he is sure that he is taking good care of her. However, he did not know that admiring her husband would hurt him that much. By this point, Nora has stopped translating, and is too immersed in her conversation with He Sung. Still, Arthur can somehow understand some of their conversations, and he cannot deny that it hurts him. When they stopped talking 12 years ago, He Sung missed her. The same goes for Nora, but she met Arthur, and at the same time, He Sung got a girlfriend. Meeting her again make He Sung think of all the possibilities that could have happened if he had visited her in New York 12 years ago, or if she had never left South Korea in the first place. But he knows that the passionate nature which made her leave is who she is. And that is what made him fall in love with her in the first place. Nora tells him that the Nayoung he fell in love with all those years ago is no longer in front of him. She is a completely different person, with a completely different life. That does not mean, however, that she never existed. She left that part of herself with Hee Sung in Korea all those years ago. 
Hee-sung already knows this, and truly loves and cherishes all their memories together. She mentions that maybe there was something in their past lives that drives them closer to each other. However, there are just not enough in Yeon's for them to end up together in this lifetime. Hee-sung smiles at the idea, and says that in this lifetime, she and Arthur probably have thousands of inyons. Hee-sung wonders who they could have been in their past lives. Maybe their relationship was an impossible one. It could be between the queen and the king's henchmen. Or maybe they are forced into a political marriage. They laugh at each other's ridiculous but not impossible ideas. Nora leaves the two at the bar to go to the restroom. There is silence between them for a moment before Hee-sung breaks the silence. He apologizes for talking with Nora too much. Arthur assures him that he understands, since he and Nora have not seen each other for a long time. The three of them return to the house, and Hee-sung picks up his luggage. He thanks Arthur for welcoming him, and invites them to visit him in Korea. Nora walks him out of the house and waits for the taxi with him. They walk in silence for some time, until they stop in front of a closed establishment. They gaze at each other for a long time, contemplating their own lives. No words are exchanged between them, but their thoughts are louder than any voice. The Uber arrives and Hee-sung gives her one last hug before loading his luggage into the car. He looks back at her and calls her name, just like he did before she emigrated all those years ago. He asks her if maybe this lifetime is a past life as well, does she think they will meet in their next lives? Nora simply tells him that she had no idea, and neither does he. They part ways once again, and this time, Hee-sung has a smile on his face. Nora returns to their home and cries in Arthur's arms, feeling all the pain welled up inside of her. Arthur comforts her in his tight embrace, assuring her that he is there for her, no matter what. 